OK, I'm here today with Gordon Hill and we're coming up for the start of the football season. Manchester United fans getting excited by the new manager, Eric Ten Hag. We've maybe not gone overboard in the transfer market. We've got, we have got some signings. How are you looking forward to this? To, you know, you're, well, you're always still very much well, a Manchester United man. How do you feel about the new yeah, season? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one of these, oh, you've got to do this, you've got to sign this, you've got to sign that. You know, uh, I know uh, Ten Hag from Holland. I played... Um, at FC 20 when he was a young 19, 20 year old. So um, he'll do things his way. Um, I've always liked the Dutch football. I've always liked the Dutch players. I've seen some very, very good young Dutch players that have become prominent in the game. Um, United are, are chasing a couple of the Dutch players at this moment. Um, and, you know, you, you, you could pass judgment and say, yes, I'd like, I'd buy him or and I wouldn't buy him. You know, just young at the moment is all, you know, doesn't want to come, doesn't want to come, doesn't want to come. And and rightfully so, a, 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 a manager, a, a, the Dutch manager wants to see if he can get a couple of Dutch players in and that the, are the standard. What I look at is say Ajax is Ajax, Man United is Manchester United. And I say that with a slow, slow words because it's a completely different animal. And um, even though some of the Dutch players that he's mentioned play for the, the Dutch team and they look great and they play well, we've, we've had a couple of, uh, uh, of, of young Dutch players in that haven't produced it. Uh, the likes of the Arnold Muren and the Franz Tysons aren't around. Um, we got a great one in Van Nistelrooy um, and, and Van Persie. So, we're looking at some great Yapstam, another fantastic centre half. Um, I've seen them come and go. I've seen the mentality of what the managers that have come in and the managers. What I don't like is managers that think they're bigger than the players or bigger than the club. Um, and I've seen the, the the other managers, the thinkers. The, 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 the mouthpieces, uh, I'm not going to put names to them because they, you, you put your own names to them. But I've seen the way that the players have come out and represented a club that is steeped in great players and, and can play anywhere in the world. And I think when I look at Ten Hag and the way that he's got to build things, yes, the... the the owners have got to take a lot of responsibility in terms of what they've had to spend and what they've given and what they've given away. I cannot understand the Pogba deal not getting anything after buying in for so much money. That is just squandered, wasted money. Even if you get 20, 30 percent back, you're getting some return. Lingard's another one where he's come through the system and bless his heart, he's not got into a into the club, so to speak. He is the club because of the way he's brought through and the way it's been really discarded. He's now looked and searched for something else. He's now got something else and you can only wish him the very best of luck. But United's famous for that, of giving other clubs or not, such a high note, good players. And, you know, people say, oh, well, we shouldn't have got rid of him, we should have kept him. That's it, that's easy said. But it's the game is all about opinions, and this is going to be about Ten Hag's opinion on what he wants to do, what he doesn't want to do, who he wants to get rid of, who he wants to keep. And he lives by the sword, and he'll die by the sword if, he, if he's not right. Because United supporters are born and bred on quality, top quality football. That's a club. If you lose, but you play top class football and you put in everything you possibly can, they know it's only going to be a matter of time before you're playing, before you're winning games. So when I, I go onto my Twitter account and I have 45,000 people and they give me stick if I say something wrong, they put pat you on the back, in, but it's it's not me. I'm just giving some thoughts on the players that are going to be signing this season. You know, is it a clean slate? Yes, it's got to be a clean slate. Ten Hag has got to say, right, okay, fine. Am I thrilled at players, at people going back to 
I'm not thrilled at Steve McLaren's going back to the club because I think it should have been, you know, we, we, we see, um, we've seen other managers bring in former players that, that or bring in other players and, and all of a sudden, out the blue, it's not worked and you've got too many, too many chefs cooking the soup and then burning it. It is not working. It's not working. So you have, say for instance, Ten Hag, who's got his philosophy on what he wants to play. Ajax has got a great system and it's a selling system. There's a selling system and there's a keeping system. United are a keeping system, not a selling system. And if you look at the players that he's got and he's got rid of, you know, wish you the very best of luck, wish you the very best of luck. See you later. You're not going to fit into my system. You're not going to fit into my game. You're not going And so Ten Hag's got his work cut out. People say, oh, great, great, great. He's had a great pre-season winning. That's always an alarm. Because your pre-season is to get fit for the bread and butter that actually starts when the season kicks off. Mm. And I think with, 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 with some of his buyers that have or haven't, some of his players that will get a chance and will not, all I can say to him is take these chances with both hands and give everything you've got. Because you, if you leave United, John, there's only one way you go. Mm. And people say, oh yeah, you go, you go sideways, not a problem. But I tell you what, most go down. I have a theory that over the past decade we've made too many what I call commercial signings. You mentioned Paul Pogba. Yeah. We've got Cristiano Ronaldo now. Yeah. It's players that are signed really for commercial reasons. How important yeah. is it to have people, I, I like to say, like you on board, on part of the football side, recruiting these players who are going to fit into the, the system that the manager yeah. wants? Yeah, you, 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 you hit the nail on the head when you, when you talk about Ronaldo. He's, he's a fabulous player. He comes back. And now it's like a swan song. And they've built, they've built, they've tried to build something around that swan song and it ain't happening. It ain't happening. Might be all right for the swan still, but it ain't happening. And so you're now trying to like, you know, rectify it. And you, you, you could, you're rectifying it by taking to pieces. And, you know, your Cavani's, People talk to me about Cavani and I just shrug my shoulders. I said, yeah, what was it? What type of buy was that? And then I look at others, you know, and they say, oh, well, he's experienced. Well, you don't play him. So how can he be? He's experienced on the bench, you know? And some of the players that, some of the players that are bought are purely commercial, purely commercial. We need a, cent we need a central defender. So let's go for Ron. Well, the, the guy's injured. The guy gets injured more times than he plays. So really, you're not looking to strengthen the side. All you're looking is to plug gaps and very, very expensive gaps. So the defender, you've got people say, Fred. Fred ain't the most talented player. He's a workhorse for you. McTominay is not graced with everything, but he's a worker and he'll give you that. But along with the workers, You've got to have people that can provide and do it. You can't have somebody scoring 20, 25 goals and nobody else scoring. That ain't going to get you. You've got to have that player scoring you at least 20, 20 to 5 goals. You've got to have wide men scoring a 6, 7 or 8. You've got to have your midfield 7 or 8 goals in midfield. Now you're challenging. But we ain't challenging. We, are, we leave... We, and, and what I noticed is... There's a hell of a lot of finger pointing and passing the buck and, and oh, he, you know, it was his fault, not stand up and be counted. United is not a club to point fingers at. If you don't do it, get out, get out. We have no, we, can, we are a club that cannot go backwards, John. One of the big attractions, I think, of Eric Ten Hag is he's got a proven track record of developing younger players, making Hopefully. players that are not established into better players. And you're a developer. I wonder how excited are you with some of the well, younger players I'm, we've got? I'm, I'm thrilled to pieces that somebody like that is in charge. But I, 
developing is great, but if you have time, and they got, and it doesn't, and if they haven't got time, they get the sack. And they're saying, "Well, develop, develop, develop." I mean, you look at look at look at other clubs that have got young players, and say, "Oh, yeah, it, you know, Frank Lampard at Chelsea when he got rid of him, they got rid of Frankie, and bless his heart, the next one that comes in, all Frank's development young players come into the team, mm-hmm. and they say, "Oh, I tell you what, whose is it? You, 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 they don't give the developer." The praise to say, I tell him what, leave him, let him develop. When he's ready, pass us those players through. Leave that system alone. Mm-hmm. We know what he's got. Don't promote him to first team manager because you're not developing anymore. That's got to be the finished article. So leave that developer and every player he passes through to you should be first division, a first first team ready. And the ones like... like We've seen Jesse Lingard that don't, then are helped on their way. But when you get educated at Man United, at the, in the youth and the right way through the system, you can play for any other club. And that's the beauty. But I think it's in stages that has got missed. And I think the, the, the powers to be, the people that are in, the, in that, don't understand the club. Don't understand what it takes to. Um, I used to sit with um, uh, a few of the old forty-eight team and listen to them at the former Man United players and and how they would ride their bike to the game and 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 they would talk about you know saying hello to Fred on the bus and 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 myself we're, we're, and it, and I look and I say well I wasn't like that I didn't ride a bus but I had a car. And I went home after a game after scoring three, three or four goals against Newcastle. I had the match ball and I give it to the kids to play in the streets. Mm. And these are th- this is development. In, not well. We'll buy him. Mm. We'll buy him. He doesn't fit. So I tell you what. Like okay, who wants him? Nobody. Nobody wants him. Anti Martin is a classic example. Nobody wants him that I look at now. Is he a Man United player? No. But no one wants him, so he's got a contract there, he's going to stay, so now he's got to try and fight. Now is the time that this player has now got to now turn around and show everybody that we were wrong and he wanted to play at Man United and that will only come with Ten Hag getting hold of him and, and, and saying, right, we need the best out of you. We're not asking you to do anything out of the ordinary. What we're asking you to do is play. Go out there and show us what you can do. That then changes minds. That then changes people's opinions. It will change my opinion. But I, I, I've been brought up on hard work, dedication, skill, flair, scoring, winning. And the big word is winning, you know. A slight aside, we'll come back to the current team in a yes. moment, but some of the things that you mentioned there reminded me Made me think about Jimmy Murphy. How important was Jimmy uh, Murphy to our football club, and how important is a is a role like a Jimmy Murphy? Well, we haven't got a Jimmy Murphy. Look what's through the club. We haven't got a Jimmy Murphy. We've got administrators. We've got people that come from other walks of life. They're not football people. They're not. I you know, and, and I, I I know them. They become friends, but if you ask about football. I, I, I'd rather not say because it's like, you know, and then you, you it, it, it to me it frustrates me because I see it because I can see, you know, it frustrates me, John, because I'm sitting in with a, an interview with you now about Man United. I'm sitting in a hotel, Mottram Hall Hotel. This was our home before games on a Friday to go back to Old Trafford and play. I'm sitting there looking at the dining room with photos of all the players from Man City and Man United, former players, 
showing you pictures of action and I'm sitting there in awe showing young players what this establishment has done. It's not changed. It, it, it's, it's the same. But trying to do that with, show that with new players that, that come into the club, you'd walk, you'd, 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 you'd run to Old Trafford to play. Now they don't run. They take jets. Hmm. They come. They have a big contract. They, they sign a big contract. They don't care if they're leaving because the next club's going to give them. The next club's going to give them. Hmm. It's, it's that factor where, as I said in, 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 in many an interview, I would have played for United for nothing because that shirt didn't have my name on the back of it in black and white or white. That number was mine. And until people and players, and I, and, and, I don't, and I don't mind how other players feel about it, until that changes, then I think what's happening is the top clubs are being leveled out with, with owners coming in and saying, I'll, I'll, I'll put 500 million in here to buy players. We'll buy our way to the top. And I was just talking to a Man City supporter who said, oh yeah, but United, I said, remember 10, 15 years ago, City were always called the poor boys of Manchester, the second team, when they had fantastic players, you know, Colin Bell, Joe Corrigan, you know, Franny Lee. I said, until somebody come along and said, here's an open checkbook, go and buy what you want. Now, look at what they've got. So. Has the game changed? Yes. Has it changed for the better? Some aspects, yes, and some aspects, no. Would I have changed what I did and how I played? Not in a million years. You can buy the game, but you can't buy my memories. Mm -hmm. And I think that's with the supporters, and they're the best supporters in the world, apart from Millwall. Why? Because I played for them. Mm -hmm. I played for the white shirts of Millwall. And now, I put a red shirt on and I tell you what, I play for the red shirt. Oh, by the way, Gordon, you can't get paid this week. I don't care. I'm out on that field. I know you know him involved with Michael Knight and his search for new owners to try yes. and get them into the football club. And he's making a big pitch on the fact he wants 25.1% of shares in the, whole, in the hands of the fans to protect the football club. Right. He's talking about trying to bring people in that will respect the football club and bring people in like yourself. Yeah. How important is that we get the right type of owners? It's got to be, has to be. I mean, to me, um, uh, the glaciers to me are just expensive landlords. They have an expensive, very expensive sports club. And next generation, when they die off, there'll be somebody else to come in. There'll be somebody else, there'll be somebody else. And as I've said to a lot of people, Man United is an institution and it will always be an institution, and it will be an institution of quality, class, and the best. Mm -hmm. And I think other clubs are gonna argue, and they can, but other clubs are always going to look at our history of being great. And until we can start looking and saying, we're coming back to it, then we're just going to go along, and if it's available, we'll buy it. If we can't, we won't, and if we need to sell it, we need to sell it because the game, the, the, the money-wise has come level pegging, as we've seen, and the, 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 the ownership, whoever owns it, it's a very expensive um, landlords because I've seen other people come into the club. I've seen people, you know, with Michael, I wish him the very best of luck. If I had four billion, I'd buy it in a heartbeat, but I would then be the people. The people's I club? I can't take it with me. No, of course. One of the things that you mentioned earlier was time, and I've worked in the media all my life, and I know for a fact that there's people in the media waiting for Eric Ten Hag to fail. Yes. How hard does that make it? Because it is a different type of job yes. at Manchester United, isn't it? You, there's extra pressures, isn't there? How it's important. Always. Is it to get time? It's always, you're not going to get time. 
you're not going to get time. My day there was 10 press. Nowadays there's 100 press, 150 press, all willing to like press a button, write, write an article, say yes, 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 no, 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 you should go, and that's it. You know, the statement comes out now, sticks and stones will break your bones, but names will never hurt you. Fortunately, it doesn't stick anymore. Sticks and stones will break your bones, but I tell you what they write will kill you. And unfortunately, opinions are like, as I call it, a-holes. Everybody has one. And I know I shouldn't say it, but to me, I have my thoughts on the game. I have my, what I would like to do. I get so much enjoyment out of developing the young players that I have. And I tell you what, it's nothing, what, what am I leaving? I'm not leaving a legacy. Oh, I was the best manager, the best player. No, I'm, the, I'm, the de I'm giving the next generation of player a chance to come through. And, and with United, John, if I would walk to Old Trafford to help them, but they won't never do that. They will never do that, you know? Why? I tell the truth. I don't beat about the bush. That's why you're so popular with the fans and you always have been, Gordon. Just, okay, then to wrap up, looking ahead to the new season, what would you judge to be a successful first season for Eric Ten Hag? Um, I think uh, I think a successful would be to show that you're competing in the league again and putting on displays that show that you are moving forward. The type of play that is is, is uh, that United are renowned for. Getting the type of players not on a short-term basis of he'll do f as a sticky plaster. Um, shifting players that think they're bigger than the club. Uh, and I think he'll do that with stamping his own authority on the, on the game, uh, which is great. And to see what his ideas are and what he comes out. Because the biggest factor is, John, when you come out of football, so to speak, and you've not got a job or you've not got a coaching role or you're not doing this and you say something to the press or something, people say, why are you doing this? Why are you saying this? Why are you this? You shouldn't do this. You should, you're finished and everything else. Hold on a second. We are the game. You think we turn the television off when we're 40 years of age and say we're never going to see another game? We're never going to talk about tactics? We're never going to talk about the future? Without, when we finish, we've got 40 years behind us of football and we've still got another 30, 40 years to go. Surely that counts for a lot as, with experience in helping another young manager, helping another young player come forward that, and that, if you look at it, that's what I do. You know, no one can sack me. No one sacks me because I'm not, I'm my own boss. And if a player gets developed, I'm not there to jump on the bandwagon. I don't want a pat on the back. I just want to say, all I want from the kids say, thank you, God. I have it here with lots of people here come up to me that are grown up now. Thanks, Gordon. Thanks very much, Gordon. You know, I come to your camp, I really learned a lot and I didn't. Just, do you know how, how pleasing that makes me? I know I want to develop that in the States as well. And I do now get calls from kids that have done it and been in it. I'm not leaving a legacy. I'm just helping another player, helping a kid that wants to play the game that gave me a game, football. That's brilliant. I think it's worth mentioning to the viewers, we have made another full video about your soccer school and the yes. guys that you brought over here to, uh, to train and to learn about the game. And I encourage people to watch that video. Yes, please. And when you're back in Seattle, we hope that Manchester United give you some pleasure when you're watching from a distance. Hey, they can have to go some, but that's my expectations, not everybody's expectations. I always think the best for it. When it's the worst, I'm afraid I've got a dog that runs <laughs> but I'd like to say to everybody that any players that are interested contact me at United Sports and I will help you get to another level if I can and help you develop 
That's fantastic. We'll put the details in the description so people can con- well, contact Well, my you. website is united-sports.net. Fantastic. Well done, Gordon. Thank you.